let's create a signal at the sum of uh, three sinusoids with defined frequencies, phases, and amplitudes. Uh, firstly, we need to create a new script. And, okay, defined frequencies. Frequency for the first sinusoid will be five. 10 for the second and, for example, 15 for the last sinusoid. Amplitudes will be, for example, 3, 1.2 and for the last 0 0.2. Phases will be 0 for the first sinusoid, for the second it will be pi divided by 2, for example, and for the last one pi divided by six. Okay, take simply frequency in 300 hertz because we need to define our sampling frequency when we talk about filtering and digital filtering. And our period will be equal to one divided by sampling frequency. Period, it's time between two digits, two counts of our data set. I'll define signal lengths. For example, it will be 1000. It doesn't matter, but it's enough to check our algorithm of sinusoid cre creation. Uh, according to these variables, uh, our maximum time will be equal to signal lengths multiplied by time period. Uh, let's run this code. If you want to run fast code, you may press Ctrl plus Enter and you will see your variables here. You see our amplitudes, frequencies and phases. Okay, let's continue. We need to generate a time array for our sinusoids and we use this notation. Our time will be from zero with the period t to the maximum time minus one period. If we select this line and press F9, we will obtain t as a um, row vector with time domain. Okay, our sine wave will be calculated according to ordinary equation. X1 uh, will be equal to first amplitude multiplied by sine from 2 multiplied by pi to time domain and to our frequency for the first sine and plus phase, of course. Don't forget to use semicolon, because if you don't use semicolon, you will see all your calculations into your workspace. It's not so comfortable to use. Copy this line and change number of your characteristics. Oh, pardon, here we'll have number three. Okay, we have three sinusoids. Just create it and you will see new arrays here. Okay, we have three periodic variables. To plot them, um, oh no, before we plot them, let's create um, y function and it will be equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. Oh, yes, great. Run this one. And let's plot it. To plot your plots, create new figure and add plot function. Actually, I recommend you to use F1 to obtain more information about function. And if we select function number and press F9, F1, we will see some syntaxes, recommendations, description of the function and examples. It's really 
useful to analyze what are you doing here. We plot our sinusoids uh, from uh, time and y variable. Select these lines and press F9. Great. We obtain strange signal, but we know that we have time here, S, X, X, and uh, here we have some amplitudes. Let's add some legend and labels to our plot because it will be more comfortable to understand what's going on here. Title, it will be, for example, gen generated in Greek is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. And add x label, it will be time in seconds. And y label, it will be an amplitude. Let's run it again. Okay, you see that you have some description of your plot. And if you want to add grid, use grid on. Great, I like this. Okay, next step is spectrum visualization and analysis. To calculate the fast Fourier transform in MATLAB, use function FFT. But firstly, we need to divide our script into two sections using double person sign. And we obtain frequencies in complex values domain using FFT functions from our generated signal. Let's run it using control plus enter and you will see the complex double values into one dimensional array. To obtain a double side spectrum P2, uh, we need to find absolute value of these uh, frequencies, but we need to divide it into lengths of our signal because of a speci specific characteristic of the fast Fourier transform. And to obtain one-sided spectrum, we need to take only first two, uh, first part of our uh, double spectrum, from from the first uh, value to the middle. L divided by two minus one. Oh, pardon, plus one. Let's run it. Okay, we have. So, next step to create frequency domain. It will be sampling frequency multiplied by a range from zero to half on our signal length and divided by signal length again. And let's um, add more values to our single size spectrum from the second value to the end minus one. It will be equal to two multiplied by double spectrum. This is some ordinary operations with the, with the signal spectrum that you obtain after FFT transformation in MATLAB. Uh, let's run this section again, use control enter to do it. We have here P1, okay. But we need to understand, is it correct or not? Plot new figure using figure function. And we have frequency domain here as X axis and as Y X we have P1 at title. Uh, FFT, for example, and let's run this code. Okay, we receive some plot, and you see these uh, spikes, and they are corresponds to the frequency that we uh, have in our sinusoids, 5, 10, into 15. Great. Let's uh, grid on and a little bit change the scale using set 
function you say it gets selection uh, gets selected uh, x parameter x scale and it will be from 0 to for example 25 okay invert in name values mm -hmm. so we have some uh, mistakes here to understand why oh pardon x slim here Okay, correct. So this is comfortable to understand what's going on. For the autoregressive power spectrum density estimation, use uh, Peberg uh, function. Let's add new section. And to obtain result using Peberg function, we need to set inputs and select some order. For example, it will be six. In the simple cases, uh, autogression order is equal to double fix number. D, this is our frequency domain and sampling frequency. So it uh, returned the power spectral density or PSD estimate in PXX array. Uh, of a discrete time signal, um, and this is a vector. To find more information about Peberg function, also I recommend you to read F1 help, and you will see the description of input and, uh, and output variables. Plot this. We will use our frequency domain and pxx variable. Set limits for our axis. GCA x lim will be also from 0 to 25 and grid on. And of course we forgot about title. Let's copy it and we will name it work. Run this section, and you will see this resulting spectra. Uh, there are some differences between uh, fast Fourier transform estimation and work methods, but you need to analyze it by your own. So, after this screencast, uh, you know how to create model signal and the sum of some sinusoids with set frequencies, phases, and amplitudes. You need to create a specific function that can do it simpler and more clear to understand. And also you know how to use fast Fourier transform for spectral estimation and what's going on when you calculate pre-work function.